Welcome to Eagle Live. What a break from Manoa. Interviewing your favorite USA Eagles around the globe. Tony Lambeau into the 22. Now, here's your host, Bill Baker. Hello and welcome to the Eagle Eyed Rugby Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. When you get a moment, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, share, and leave a review. I'd love to hear from you. Now, on this episode, I check in with Exeter Chiefs back rower, wait, center, Kate Zachary. That move to center is part of our chat, as well as playing alongside Eagle teammate Gabby Cantorna in the backs. We also go into Exeter Chiefs playoff chances and what's next for Kate. I hope you enjoy the conversation. Here I am with Kate. All right, well, first of all, Kate, thank you for your time. Thank you for your minutes. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm just enjoying uh, quite a couple days. So we're off for we're off from games this weekend and with the Easter holiday, the coaches gave us a few days off. So just a little bit of gym this morning and otherwise brunch with a couple teammates and at home now relaxing. Yeah, and you have a couple of weeks until your next match, so um, you have some time off this weekend, but I don't know what it looks like over there, but are you able to get out and, I don't know, sightsee or do something? <laughs> um, yeah, you're, you're technically allowed to go on a few walks, of course, still trying to minimize, obviously, group sizes and really just getting out, getting a little bit of exercise, but still not trying to be out and about too much. Um, in about a week's time, I think April 12th, a few things start opening up. Um, we were actually looking at maybe doing some camping one night, like an overnight. Oh, nice. Um, nice. So there's a few places that start opening up in the next week or two. So it's kind of awkward, too. We, we have this four-day weekend, but nothing to do. <laughs> yeah. There's <laughs> only so many books you can read or Netflix you can watch. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know you're in my Netflix time right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Let's get going. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you're, you know, we got a few weeks left of the season. Or um, How are you feeling physically? Has it been a pretty tough season on your body? Um, you know, at times, uh, it's, it's been a very long consistent season, which is great. It's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's an environment I haven't been in, in a couple years since I left sevens. Mm -hmm. Um, but honestly feeling very good. Like I, I truthfully, you know, despite the postponement of world cup was, was kind of feeling like I'm, I'm a bit more in my prime at the moment. Feel like I'm kind of all, um, all cogs and everything are moving. They're they're well oiled, so feeling good. Okay, so it, has there been less contact since you moved to center the last two matches? <laughs> uh, uh, that move to center, you know, all respect for backs, but I do greatly <laughs> miss um, those five meter, you know, rhinos as we'll call them, and I think a lot of teams yeah. do as well. You know, those those five meter, just grab your buddies and run into other people and bash yeah. each other over the line and um you know line outs just kind of all those it's it's interesting i mean mentally it's actually been really good to work on different parts of the game but physically I, the first game i was like how do you justify feeling good in the backs because i didn't hit i think i made two tackles <laughs> I was like, it's strange. <laughs> I think it's the cleaner your uniform is at the end of the match, the better maybe? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately for me, that was when we played Saracens then, and it was turf, mm -hmm. so there was no one was dirty. <laughs> All right. Well, you yeah. seem to be a natural there. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you have played center before. I mean, player of the day in that first match? Uh, um, so <laughs> when I first started my rugby career, you know, with one of my – with some friends and things like that, it was just – Hey, you're, you're fast, you're quick. We don't want to teach him any rules. So mm -hmm. play center, we'll just throw you the ball and just run down the sideline. So in my the very few games I ever played early, early, early on, I was a center. Also, I think more so they didn't have to really teach me anything. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that move come about? Was that something that Susie thought, you know, uh, maybe with Rachel coming into the scene more, be more beneficial to the team? Um, well, you know, unfortunately, we've had a couple injuries mm -hmm. and other setbacks for other players. Um, you know, that's just unexpected. And, you know, unfortunately, it's been kind of a couple in the back line. Um, and then, you know, Rachel has come over. We've had a couple other few standout players who've been around as well. You know, we've got Abby Fleming, um, one of our Welsh players, who's a consistent performer. Um, you know, comes off the bench a lot. So we've, we've got a lot of depth in the back row at the moment. And so, it, yeah, it was kind of one of those, unfortunately, missing a few people in the backs now. We have to make it up and where are we strongest. 
So is this a situation where Gabby was a little upset because um, there's only room for maybe one eagle in the centers? <laughs> right? And how is that? How is that? Been? I know you two have known each other for a bit. So how has that been <laughs> inside and outside together? Uh, actually, it's probably been the nicest Gabby's ever been to me because um, I think she wants to still see the back line be successful. So she's had to take me under her wing to ensure she's looked after, <laughs> honestly. Um, no, it's it's been great. You know, Gabby's actually been a fantastic teacher as well as, you know, the other backs they've from day one. They're like, OK, welcome in. Like, let's teach everything. And um, so it's been great. It's been a learning curve, um, but everyone's been really patient. <laughs> Well, and speaking of everyone else, as a team, you know, what makes this Chiefs team special? You know, why do you play well together? Um, uh, truthfully, I think it is the, the newness we have right now. You know, everyone is, when we when they came together in August before we even got here in September and things like that, I mean, people, were, just about everyone was relocating or mm -hmm. transforming some part of their life to come here, whether you know, even if they were already here in Exeter to make the decision to play for this team and commit to it. I mean, that's also a big change in life, changing work, possibly school studies, et cetera. So there's a bit of that factor of just everyone was, is new. Everyone is buying into something. Um, and so really we just, there's so much to learn. Every, every day is kind of exciting. Every day is like a first date in a sense where you, you're learning right. something new about someone and, uh, which keeps everything just, it's really exciting. The energy's high. Um, you know, and even in those first few games, we lost really close games, which I think really um, kind of inspired folks to realize that, like, we, we could be competitive. I mean, mm -hmm. those first couple games, we only lost by, you know, a handful of points, which is massive, being a team, once again, who didn't also know each other. So, in theory, should have struggled more. Um, so, there's, I think, the, the culture that's kind of organically built around the common, you know, uprooting of our lives to commit to this team, I think has been a, a huge denominator as common denominator that's pulled everyone together. And then just the grit and energy and passion to do well in the league um, has really helped. Yeah. And some big wins, you know, over Saracens, obviously not the last time. <laughs> and then the but... wins come and then really the ball <laughs> just gets rolling from there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then when you have the newer players like Jojo and Rachel show up, um, they seem to fit right in really well. Rachel is just, you know, scoring tries, getting starts. Um, you know, how important has, has she been to uh, the team as well? Yeah, Rachel and JoJo jumped right in. Um, yeah. You know, once they were able to join the team after getting here and quarantine and everything, um, they're two, uh, the two of them just as, as general individuals, as people outside of rugby are, are very easygoing and kind and lovable people for lack of any other term. But um, which is great. So they, they meshed right in as if they'd been here all season, um, which made, I think, that transition to playing as well um, very seamless. You know, Rachel was able to slot in. Um, she is, I, I mean, she's just a battler. She's a gladiator on the field and um, loves defense. And, you know, as you've known from watching our games, our, our team loves defense. So, again, that's just a puzzle piece fitting right into the box with the rest of us. So... You know, she's done fantastic. JoJo's doing a great job, you know, just getting comfortable, getting to know all the plays, getting to know the people. is a huge asset in the pitch. You know, unfortunately, it hasn't gotten on and gotten a lot of game time just yet, but mm -hmm. um, is a huge asset on the practice field every day, um, pushing people around and um, just raising the intensity. All right, going on. So um, two, two rounds remaining, I believe, for the playoffs. Um, that late try given up last week, was really tough on you guys. It really hurt your chances for playoffs, getting into the playoffs. So can you paint a picture of what your chances are like right now and what it would take to get in? Yeah, so obviously the math isn't great. Um, unfortunately, there's a bit that's more out of our hands. Um, you know, so so after after that game, and there's there's definitely a lot of disappointment just around that. I mean, we we needed a few more bonus points, but at the end of the day as well, it, it doesn't come down to just that game. I mean, there there's other games that a few things didn't go our way, that maybe we, we let off the pedal a little too early, et cetera. So it does kind of, when it comes down to that last moment, though, and and you have to have this nail-biter of a, of a league table finish, um, it, it's hard not to think about some of those other games, though, earlier in the season that we just missed the mark too many times. But, um, 
Yeah. So a lot of things, again, we, we have um, sale coming up in Gloucester. Those will be two really important games. Again, we still need to go in, we need to win, and we need to come out with a few bonus points. But it really is going to come down to some of those other top four finishes um, right. and how their outcomes are. So you touched on the World Cup postponement, postponement earlier, and you took the words out of my mouth. It seems like you are definitely playing at your peak right now, your prime. So <laughs> When you heard about the postponement, you know, what was your immediate reaction, your emotions to that? Um, it, it was interesting. You know, we, we got an email from Emily Bidewell, our high performance director. Um, it was about, you know, 6.15 or so. It was a few, like 10, 15 minutes before we were heading up to the training pitch here. Um, and it was just, uh, you know, girls, I want you to know before before the news comes out publicly, but you know, this is happening and it was, it was really tough. It was the weekend before we were playing wasps, which again is, was a huge uh, mile marker for us trying to make top four. So you're in this conflicted mindset of the immediate nature that you need to be mentally engaged in. Um, and then of course the secondary, again, while we're here, why we're here, why we're doing what we're doing and what we're working to, um, is now being recommended to be pushed away. And, um, so we took five minutes, uh, we, you know, me, Jojo, Rachel, um, everyone, we kind of just read the email aloud together, took five minutes to just say any feelings you had, but then honestly, we, we had a job to do. Um, yeah. we had to prepare for WAS that weekend and it was one of those after the game, feel everything you want to feel. But, um, yeah, so it, it's tough. It was, it was a bit disappointing, but, uh, on the flip side, I think it's going to hopefully, um, improve the overall quality of the tournament, allowing teams a bit more time to prep and prepare and make sure everyone's healthy and fit and firing uh, ahead of when we actually all get together and play. When I spoke to Rob about this, you know, it's it's difficult. You know, you look at um, you four or five over there are playing at a high level, but then outside of that, you know, who else is playing? So potentially this is actually a really good thing overall for the USA squad, maybe to wait a year so that way there's a season at least under their belts of playing. Would you agree? Yeah, I think so. I mean, going into what would have been 2021, right, if we had had it stayed the same, I think we would have been extremely competitive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the girls back home are, are working extremely hard. The the programs, the staff are putting out. I know everyone is bought in. They're, they were prepared to change their lives. I mean, so many people had already put into motion job changes and things like that. So that's that's the toughest part at the moment mentally and emotionally with the with the postponement but if we can overcome some of those in the next year and keep the focus up support people on and off the pitch then yeah i think we have a great shot at um you know, being a top four contender and kate uh last thing for you um what's next after the season for you <laughs> that's a great question <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, at some point I'll come home. That much I know. Um, still trying to figure that out exactly. You know, we're we're starting discussions about next year. You know, whether we want to come back to England or not. What does that look like? Um, with the postponement, Rob and the staff are still kind of compiling what the next six months look like for USA. So we'll probably have a camp in the summer. Um, hopefully, some games in the summer and the fall. Um, but once we finish here in May, I think just come home for maybe a few weeks and relax. <laughs> and, um, and, and do I, nothing. I think that's the, <laughs> yeah, I think the only thing for sure is I'll come back to America sometime in May. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> All right, well, that's good. That's good. At least you you know got that much ahead of you, so that's fine. Yeah. All right, listen, Kate, thank you so much for jumping on with me and, and spending your free time. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your responses to these questions. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me.